In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. 
Good afternoon, I'm Francesca Amaker. Right now, Georgia is dealing with spiking coronavirus cases and the medical and economic struggles they bring with them. But there are some hopeful signs. The latest job numbers show slow but steady improvements in unemployment. First time applications fell again last week, down to 1.3 million, according to the Department of Labor. That's still a high, historic high. The 15th consecutive week initial actually claims have been over 1 million. The number of Americans claiming unemployment benefits for two weeks or more also fell to 18.1 million as well. That means employers have slowed layoffs, but it's still a long way from back to normal. And here in Georgia, the number of initial unemployment claims filed last week dropped again by almost 14,000. There were 103,590 claims filed across the state. And the previous week, according to the National Labor Department, that number fell by more than 8,000. The state crediting fewer layoffs in several industries like waste management, transportation, and educational services. And with case numbers rising in Georgia, so is the demand for testing. That's causing struggles for many people to even get a test and long delays to receive results. Our Nick Sturdivant is at one testing site right now in DeKalb County. And Nick, you have lots of company with you. Yeah, that's right. Good afternoon, Francesca. We're at the former Kmart on Buford Highway in Doraville. And when we first got here, our, our first impression was wild because we got here 30 minutes before things kicked off and the lines were the line rather was long and the line has looked like this for the past two hours here at this testing location. And, and, and what we're seeing right now, we're seeing obviously the long line of people waiting, waiting to get tested, but you're also seeing a lot of people that are walking up, uh, waiting to get tested as well. And this is one of two additional testing sites that DeKalb County opened today. Real Beth Baptist Church on Lawrenceville Highway in Tucker is the other new location that opened this morning. Overall, uh, with these two new sites, there are now six testing sites in DeKalb County. If you uh, do come, you are encouraged to schedule an appointment. A lot of counties say if you don't, it, it really holds things up um, as far as testing. Despite the long way, we spoke with a man in line who says it's worth it. My buddy told me that it'll be like a two hour wait, but I didn't expect to see all this, um, honestly. Uh, for me, it's worth the wait because um, I have a large family, a lot of people living in the house, so I got to come out and make sure that I'm clean so that I can be around them and my nephews as well. So. That's the large reason just to be safe. And Francesca, again, behind me, you see the long line. Again, there's a combined, you combine the long line of cars and also the people that are walking up to get tested. This location, the former Kmart on Buford Highway here in Doraville and Real Beth Baptist in Tucker are open until 5 o'clock. You're strongly, again, encouraged to uh, schedule an appointment online. You can do that by going to thecabhealth.net or calling 404-294-3700. Uh, again, that number is 404 Two nine four three seven zero zero. You can also find more information on our website at 11alive.com. Francesca. Thank you so much, Nick. DeKalbHealth.net, folks. The number of people seeking medical care continues to rise as cases show no sign of slowing down. Yesterday, the Department of Public Health reported 3,520 new COVID-19 cases. That's around second largest increase since the virus was first reported in our state. Young adults remain the largest age group impacted. Those ages 18 to 29 account for 24% of all positive cases, but still only a fraction, 6% of all hospitalizations. The age group seeking the most medical treatment are those in their 60s. They account for only 10% of all COVID cases, but 20% of all hospital patients reported. And the rise in infections is pushing community leaders to take stronger action like mask mandates. Last night, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms signed an executive order requiring face coverings in public. Right now on 11alive.com, we are asking if you think wearing a mask should be enforced. And right now you're almost split down the middle. You see it right here on the screen. Now, in addition to covering your nose and mouth within the city of Atlanta, the mayor's order also bans gatherings of more than 10 people on city property. There are exceptions, though. For instance, anyone younger than 10 years old, anyone 
in their own car and anyone with a medical condition or disability that prevents them from wearing a mask, like requirements in Savannah, Athens and East Point, Atlanta's mandate goes against Governor Brian Kemp's executive order suggesting mask usage. However, it does not specifically outline the consequences for not wearing a mask. We're reaching out to the mayor's office for clarification on that one. And the city of South Fulton is expected to hold an emergency virtual meeting to discuss a mask mandate. We'll be letting you know about that. The meeting will actually take place tomorrow night at 630. Athens Clark, East Point and Savannah already have the rule in effect. The city of Doraville says it will issue a mask ordinance on Monday. Chesley, over to you. Francesca, you brought out the sunshine. We started out with some clouds and now it's sunny. She said she's a sunflower. She's proven it. We're looking at uh, just a few clouds in the background there. A couple cumulus, cumulus clouds. That's it. We're going to heat up nicely this afternoon. A lot of spots getting close at least to 90 for an afternoon high. Those are clouds I was telling you about. Those clouds now dissipating. So we got decent amounts of sunshine, but don't get used to it. Yeah, we'll have some thunderstorms popping up a little bit later on this afternoon. Scattered thunderstorms, and we're not looking at severe weather at all, but just some, some very heavy downpours. We're in the 80s as we speak. 83 degrees right now in Atlanta. 86 in Duluth. That's one of the warm spots out there. 85 in Athens and over toward Peachtree City. Again, a lot of spots may hit 90 this afternoon. I'm thinking 89 for the high. Again, scattered thunderstorms will be around. We'll drop down to 82 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight. Good night maybe to eat your patio, eat your dinner out on your patio if you don't have any of the thunderstorms. More on your forecast coming up. Francesca, back to you. Chesley, thank you. Right now at noon, the search is on to find the gunman who shot a nine-year-old boy and two others. The shooting happened last night in southeast Atlanta near Flat Shoals Avenue and Glenwood Avenue. Atlanta police say an argument led to the shootings. Police say the little boy who was shot in the leg multiple times and other two people will be okay. And we know now when Sequoia Turner, the innocent eight-year-old's life who was tragically taken, will be laid to rest. A viewing will take place next Tuesday from 1 to 6 p.m. at the Murray Brothers Funeral Home on Utoy Springs Road. On Wednesday, she will be laid to rest following a celebration of her eight years on this earth at New Calvary Missionary Baptist Church on Melrose Drive. And two big rulings from the Supreme Court just came down today about President Trump's financial records. The first allows the Manhattan District Attorney to obtain the president's tax returns as part of a grand jury investigation into hush money payments to two women claiming they had affairs with Mr. Trump. The second is better news for the president. It keeps a hold on financial records that House Democrats have been trying to uh, get for more than a year, the president responding to the rulings with a series of tweets calling it political prosecution. And Georgia's primary runoff is right around the corner. And with the state's June primary voting problems now in the past, Fulton County elections officials are focused on making sure they're ready this time around. Mara Siriana explains the preparations underway. Georgia's June 9th primary was marred by long lines, issues with voting machines, a lack of paper ballots, you name it. This time around, Fulton County elections officials say they won't be caught off guard for the August 11th runoff. We participated in a program for a while where we uh, were keeping track of line lengths and wait times. We are also using past voter turnout data. Uh, for early voting as well as for election day. But we'll be looking at projections as well from previous elections. Earlier this year, Fulton County hosted five early voting sites for the primary. This time around, they'll open 20 for the runoff. Fulton County's elections chief, Richard Barron, says training for early voting began last week. Elections day training begins today. We are going to send out uh, a training video to groups that would request it. This will demonstrate the, the Dominion voting system. We are also going to pursue production of a video that explains the vote by mail process. Barron says they're working hard to improve training materials to ensure things run smoothly. Remember, the voter registration deadline for the primary runoff is Monday, July 13th. Early voting goes from July 20th through August 7th. Schools making plans to keep students and staff safe this fall, but those precautions aren't enough for some parents. We take a closer look at the switch to homeschooling. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. 
Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1101 Live News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more. Welcome back. More school districts are solidifying back to school guidelines. The reality is it could keep changing as COVID-19 trends change. When we talked with Clayton County Superintendent about leaning towards fully digital learning come August, he said this year will require a lot of flexibility. The options are designed to recognize that we have to remain very fluid and nimble and be able to pivot based upon what the data tells us. For example, if we have to start virtually, I'm hopeful that at some point, if we can get this data, uh, the pandemic data under control, we may find ourselves uh, stepping down, if you will, to a blended model where we have some face-to-face -face and some, some virtual learning. And then as the data continues to improve, we may find ourselves in a situation where we can come back all face-to-face. As far as digital learning goes, the end of the year showed that many kids couldn't consistently connect because they don't have good internet or even access to a device. At 6 p.m., we'll talk about how districts are trying to close that gap. And Marietta City Schools announced a mandated mask policy when the school year begins on August 4th. It's hoping to slow the spread of COVID-19. Anyone inside the schools, including visitors and parents, will have to wear a mask at all times. And this is a change in the original plan when they were strongly encouraging people to wear masks. We may need to build in opportunities for kids who are uncomfortable with the mask to take it off every 15 or 20 minutes by going outside for a moment where it's supervising, having just a minute to like shake it off and come back in. We're willing to make every reasonable accommodation so children can get back in school. Now the district is also limiting large group assemblies and field trips for the time being. For the full story, head to myeastcobnews.com. And parents want to put their kids' health and safety first, of course, even though some districts say they will reopen the classroom this fall with lots of precautions. It's making some parents very uneasy, opting for homeschool instead. Natisha Lance spoke to parents about their concerns. For eight-year-old Miles, having school at home is nothing new. It's not as difficult as people believe it to be. He's been doing it for years with the help of his mom, tutors, and a small co-op group of homeschoolers. They take their lessons beyond the classroom to learn skills like entrepreneurship and even horticulture. Homeschooling can look any way you choose it to be. 
and you have to find what works best for you and your family. With COVID numbers still on the rise, more families are considering homeschool when school restarts. There were concerns about them going back into a physical environment right and not really knowing what that social distancing piece is going to look like in clayton um, county dexter you know, cameron is leaning well. toward the same option for his niece and nephew if the school district decides to reopen their classrooms the two live with their grandmother who would be at high risk of catching covid 19. we just want to make sure that we can control that environment and limit that exposure. But before you go all in, experts say take some time to consider the challenges of homeschool. To do it well, it's extraordinarily demanding. It's comparable to how demanding is it to be a teacher, right? And so if you're if you're a really good teacher, it's extremely demanding. It is, and families are having a lot of hard conversations right now. But when you're trying to explain everything from a worldwide pandemic to racism to social justice, it can be hard to even know where to start. So Christy Diaz sat down with Dr. Sandra Moss Robinson, a specialist in adolescent and young adult psychiatry. She takes you behind the headline. There's just a lot going on in the world right now. It's heavy and it's a lot to digest. So when it's this difficult for even an adult to wrap their mind around the complexities of what's going on, how do you even breach this with a child? Kids at different ages have a different response. There's not just one right answer for parents here. As I tell my patients, I, you know, I'm a physician, not a magician. I don't have answers, no one does. With the younger kids, there is the need to just be reassuring, focus on the today and for them to be safe. The older kids getting into teenage years, they're like adults, they're thinking about the future. And that is a, a whole different ball game that you have to address with them. Just a couple of days ago, an eight-year-old was caught up in all of this and was shot and killed driving in the car with her parents. If your child is scared, that's valid. I mean, there are a lot of things to be scared of right now. You know, always, I think, lead from a place of from yourself first so that you're identifying issues that then the child can relate to. I didn't sleep well last night and um, I was worried about things. Um, do you ever get worried? Parents need to be completely honest with their kids. Mommy, when is this going to end? I hope you'll be honest and say, we don't know. We do know right now we're doing okay. I wonder if maybe the the only wrong response here is just not to talk about it at all. Absolutely. There's less anxiety if you can talk about it. There was so much more to this interview. So if you want to hear more from Dr. Moss Robinson, I have posted the full interview on my 11 Alive Facebook page. That's good information right there. Take a look live outside over Circle, Circle 75 is what we call it, the clover leaf. Look at these uh, cumulus clouds. These are the type of clouds that you draw on your pictures, right? Whenever you make clouds, you make those cotton balls. Yeah, starting to see some cumulus begin to form. We're going to put a blue sky behind it. So we got the sunshine beating through. So it is a nice day, nice looking day so far. Temperatures are in the low 80s, but when you factor in that humidity, the dew point is 71. You factor in the humidity, it feels like the upper 80s out there. And we'll get close to 90, I believe, for this afternoon. Uh, depending on how long that sunshine hangs on, we'll see more clouds forming and the chance for a few isolated or scattered showers popping up. Already starting to see an isolated shower up here to the far north with a lightning strike, one or two right in there. This is right at the corner of uh, Fanning, Gilmer County. Uh, it's got a little moderate rain in there, maybe some a little pocket of heavy rain with a lightning strike or two. That's about it there. And then over toward the east, we have a few isolated showers over toward Comer, Elbert, Elberton, and then toward em Enterprise as well. Got some light showers there. We'll see more of this popping up as we head through the afternoon. Uh, as those temperatures again heat up to around 89 degrees, going to give it a six out of a possible 11. We'll give it a 40% chance for the scattered showers. Uh, a lot of you won't see the rain at all. Just know that it will be hot though. If you're going to be venturing out, carry the umbrella with you just in case, just in case you need it. Got some showers ending now uh, over here to the west, south and west of our area over toward Alabama into the panhandle of Florida. Uh, we're also watching an area of low pressure that's off the coast. This is all at the surface, an upper level load that's moving through our area as we speak. So uh, that will be the trigger for some of those scattered showers that pop up later on this afternoon. Speaking of this area of low pressure off the coast, that could become a tropical storm. There's about an 80% chance for development, according to the Hurricane Center. 
of the next two days and the next five days as well. If it happens to become a tropical storm, it will be named Faye, so we'll watch that. But you can see uh, the main movement for this is up toward the north and east, so it will be uh, moving right along the outer banks of North Carolina. You can see it's still spitting back a lot of uh, moisture either way, whether it changes to something tropical or not. Still a lot of moisture associated with that. We'll be moving up toward the Delmarva Peninsula by tomorrow and then heading out to sea. So not going to affect our weather much at all. It is having somewhat of an effect right now, that counterclockwise spin uh, having somewhat of an effect today. But as it continues to pull further away, we'll have less of an effect on us. Again, 80% chance for this to turn tropical over the next couple of days. So we'll watch it for you. Keep you updated. Faye already F as far as the name storms already this season. So shaping up to be or what could be a very busy season. Not even at peak yet. All right, we'll take a look at our forecast track model. You can follow along with the time right there at the top of the screen. Shows about a 40% chance for scattered showers to pop up. Some embedded thunderstorms could drop some brief heavy rain on you. Perhaps a gusty wind or two associated with it. By about 9, 10 o'clock, that should subside. We'll see partly sunny skies start the day on Friday. And then by the afternoon, a 30% chance for a scattered shower in the afternoon. Uh, maybe a rumble of thunder or two. And that chance goes down even as we head into the weekend. So the weekend looking a little bit better. We got a 20% chance on Saturday, 20% chance on Sunday as well. But the temperature will be going up. Looking at 90 on Friday, 92 on on Saturday, Sunday 91, and then we'll stay with temperatures right near 90 degrees as we head into the work week next week with that low chance for rain continuing. Francesca, back to you. Thank you, Chesley. Debating about whether to book a flight because of coronavirus? Well, our Verify team looked into what airlines are taking the most precautions. Well, we have a new feature on our app allowing you to share your pictures and your videos directly with 11 Alive. Here's how to use the new feature. You open your 11 Alive news app, Navigate to the Near Me button at the bottom right and tap it. This takes you to a map where you can see all the 11 Alive related content like pictures and articles that's near your current location. Next, tap the orange Share With Us, then take a picture or video or upload one from your camera roll. Fill out the required boxes, add the caption if you want, and your location. You can either click Use My Current Location or Put in your own information and then just click submit. It is so easy to use. And your photos and videos, they're going to go straight to our news producers and digital team so we can see exactly what you want to share. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation. Welcome back. Atlanta is home to Hartsville Jackson International, the world's busiest airport. But with the ongoing pandemic, many of you are asking which airlines are taking the most precautions to keep you safe while traveling. You ask, so we verified. The Verify team is here to stick to the facts, presenting only what we know to be true. And today we're focusing entirely on questions about airlines. Viewers want us to verify which are taking precautions and which are not, so they can make good decisions on any summer travel. Here are sources. We reached out to the four biggest domestic airlines 
and we spoke with Seth Kaplan, an airline analyst. Let's start with masks and verify our face coverings required on board. All four airlines responded and told us, yeah, face coverings are required for adults unless they have a medical condition. All right, let's move on to question two and verify our middle seats being left open to create more social distancing. Turns out it depends on the airline. For Delta and Southwest, this is verified. They're leaving the middle seats open through the end of September to promote social distancing. But for American and United, this is false. As of July 1st, they started selling tickets for those middle seats. It's a move that's prompted criticism from some lawmakers. Democratic Senator Jeff Merkley from Oregon tweeted out this photo on an American flight and said he was gonna introduce a bill to try and ban the sale of tickets for middle seats. Now, American didn't respond directly to this criticism, but United told us in part, quote, Blocking middle seats is a public relations strategy, not a safety strategy, because sitting in the aisle seat doesn't adequately distance you from the person in the window or across the aisle. You know, a middle seat, it's not six feet wide. Our airline expert says there's some weight to this argument. No health expert is gonna say that a, a middle seat is true social distancing, but if you think, hey, 18 inches better than nothing at all, 100 people on an airplane better than 150, then that's one of those judgments that we can kind of all make for ourselves. Atlanta Speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1105 News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage. It is nice to pause these days and appreciate some of the wonders around us, right? So if you're a fan of sunflowers, listen up. Anderson Sunflower Farm is right here in coming is now open with a slightly larger operation than usual. Look at that gorgeous. The owner says there's an extra field of flowers, which should make social distancing a little easier. This colorful display dates back more than 20 years when the owner's father gave up on trying to grow corn and wheat. Rather than the fields growing up in the weeds, he just decided he's going to plant sunflowers that year. And so that's, that's kind of how we got started. And people started wanting to try to buy them. And photographers wanted to use the fields for uh, pictures. And so 20 something years later, this is where we're at. Check it out in person. Head to our website, 11alive.com, for more information. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching 11 Alive at noon. I'm Francesca Amaker. Stay safe.
going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime.